Hey friends, how's it going? I hope you're having a great day. Uh, welcome back to the channel. So it seems a ton of you guys have managed to get a hold of a Steam Deck over Christmas. Uh, if you have, congratulations. Welcome to Video Game Addiction. Join the party. Uh, it smells kind of weird in here. You'll hopefully get used to it. Um, so I thought this would be the perfect time to recommend some more Steam Deck games. So let's get started with one of my favorite games of all time. Persona 5. So there's a good chance that you would have heard of this game as literally everyone bangs on about it, but it's for a good reason as it's possibly one of the best RPGs ever made. And if you haven't played this game yet, the Steam Deck or Switch is by far the best way to play. So if you didn't know, Persona 5 is a turn-based life sim RPG kind of mashup with a complex storyline and great characters. You play as a teenager who gets transferred to Tokyo after being falsely accused of assault while protecting a woman. What a king. You start a new school, make some friends, get a job, explore a beautifully presented Tokyo. But before long, things start to get a little bit weird. You by accident stumble into the metaverse, which is a kind of dark, mirrored version of the real world. But instead of microtransactions and steamed meats, you get talking cats and demons. But some of the demons look like this. They also look like this. So, you know, you could say that you'd never, never see it come back. Except you would because it's a massive penis. This metaverse is a place where human thought takes tangible form and by defeating people's personal demons, you can trigger a change of heart within them in the real world. This not only gives an excuse for combat and dungeons, but also makes for a really interesting narrative device with some really beautiful touching moments. Aside from this, you get to choose how you spend your time and who you spend it with, which progresses your stats in different ways and deepens your bond with certain characters. And it's something you really want to do as doing literally anything in this game is so rewarding. But spending your time wisely in the game is essential as the whole game runs essentially on one big countdown. And at several points throughout the game, you'll have to clear a dungeon in a certain amount of days, otherwise you'll hit game over. But thankfully, despite combat being turn-based, it's been injected with a ton of modern improvements which makes it feel super fast and fun. And to top it off, the music just absolutely slaps, dude. Just about anyone that's played this game agrees that it's one of the best soundtracks ever made in a game. All of these elements come together to make one of the most immersive games I've ever played in my life. Uh, and it's really hard to relate how good it is until you play it for yourself. Next game. Firewatch is one of the most beautiful, well-realized games that I've ever played. There's something so wonderfully human about it that is really hard to put into words. You play as a man named Henry, who is retreated from a hectic middle-aged life to work as a fire lookout in the forest. Your job is to keep watch for smoke and keep the wilderness safe. Your supervisor, a woman named Delilah, is available to you at all times over a small handheld radio. And she's just about your only connection to the outside world. Maybe you can see where this is going. Now this is a tricky one to talk about as I feel like it's a game where the less you know going in the better. But trust that it's a game that once you start, you are just gripped. You will not want to put this down until you see those credits. You get led down this crazy hole of mystery and intrigue, all while battling these demons from your past and exploring a beautiful wilderness and trying to build the only meaningful relationship you have left. The one with Delilah. Again, maybe you can see where this is going. It's in these interactions with Delilah that so much of what makes this game special take place. The communication over the radio just feels so genuine and full of personality, all emphasized with stellar voice acting and writing. What's in this cave down here? NFS tells people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. You're in it, aren't you? It doesn't seem that dangerous. Whoa, whoa, ah, no! Henry! Seriously, it's completely fine in here. <sighs> Damn it. I have honestly never played a game before where the characters have felt this real and down to earth, aside from maybe like The Last of Us. And that's pretty high praise if you ask me. As for gameplay, it's pretty simple. It's more of a beautiful walking simulator with some simple puzzles than anything. Um, but like I said, it's the characters and the narrative uh, that make this game really special. It's truly such a special story that feels straight up taken from a more mature Pixar film. 
and it's one that stayed with me for a really long time and it stayed with you too apparently. A couple months ago I asked you guys for game suggestions to play and literally all of you were like Fire Watch! Fire Watch! And it's cool. I already played it. Um, shame about that ending though. Next game! Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion. I am so glad that this game exists. It was the sole reason I got a PSP back in the day. So the fact that not only has this got a full remaster, but that it plays beautifully on the Steam Deck honestly makes me a little bit emotional. So if you didn't know, Crisis Core is basically a prequel to Final Fantasy VII and tells the story of Zack Fair, who's training to become part of the soldier elite that his three biggest role models are a part of. As you move through the game, you learn about the dark secrets of the corrupt company Shinra, the events that led to Cloud becoming the man he is in Seven, and more importantly, find out why Sephiroth is such a massive dick. I'm still not over it, mate. No one's over it. The combat system has been greatly upgraded from the original and now plays really smooth, modern, and much more akin to the Final Fantasy VII remake. And what I love most about the combat system is how they've interweaved these great cutscenes and moments of humanity into the special attacks. It's such an ingenious way to tie story and emotion into gameplay and I'm really surprised that they haven't used this in Final Fantasy games since. The graphic overhaul for the most part has been done wonderfully with textures and scenes and effects all looking great. Although there's something slightly weird about the faces that I just can't put my finger on. Uh, but it's fine. However, something that was a major letdown was some of the overhauled voice acting. Jill! However, switching to Japanese, like the Weeb I am, easily sorted that out. The mission system allows you to quickly hop into short bursts of gameplay with great rewards, which is perfect for playing on the go. Obviously, this being designed for a PSP just translates perfectly into a Steam Deck. If you're into RPGs or you're just delving into the world of Final Fantasy VII after the remake, I highly, highly recommend giving this one a go. Next game, <coughs> Cult of the Lamb. This game is so much fun. It's essentially an Animal Crossing Binding of Isaac mashup with an art style inspired by the likes of Paper Mario. You play as a possessed lamb that is tasked with forming a cult to appease the demon who saved your life at the start of the game. You head out into a roguelike dungeon system to gather resources, perks and weapons, kill enemies in the form of rival cultists and rescue other animals to indoctrinate into your cult. It's then up to you to take care of these followers back at camp by feeding them, building them homes, giving them gifts, and holding little Sunday services for team morale. Or you can kill them, feed them poop, and give them silly names. But I'm leaning towards Keith. I played some of this game on stream with you guys and I honestly had such a blast. I haven't completed it yet, um, but from my playtime so far, it's just such a genius mix of genres that's incredibly addictive to play. And it's another one that just works perfectly for Steam Deck as the pick up and play nature suits checking in on your villagers throughout the day or clearing a quick 10 minute dungeon just so well. Combat is fast and fun with loads of variety and weapons and special abilities and it feels so rewarding bringing back a ton of loot and expanding and developing your camp. There's some great side activities to get lost in too and completing small tasks for your villagers feels light and fun and gives depth to your followers back at camp. I've got a Keith to get back to. He's cold and alone and you're getting in my way. I highly highly recommend this game and thank you to all the people that recommended it to me. Next game. Prey is a painfully underrated game. It makes me so sad to see so little people have played it as this game is honestly fantastic. It's a first person shooter survival game developed by Arcane Studios, i.e. the people that made Deathloop and Dishonored. It takes a ton of inspiration from games like Bioshock and Half-Life, but does enough in my opinion to stand out with a really cool art style, a fantastic setting and an awesome narrative. Now on paper, this looks like a very average run of the mill kind of game, but where it really shines for me is its incredible level design and how it creates atmosphere. After a mind bending introduction, you set out on the abandoned spacecraft Talos One where the 
whole game takes place. This huge mysterious environment just feels so real and so lived in and has so many small stories, audio logs and character just weaved into every corner. This expands the narrative and really makes you care about the history of this space station and the people connected to it. But it also genuinely makes you want to explore every inch of this place, find every secret and open every door. If you've played an arcane game before, you know how much attention to detail goes into alternative paths and hidden rooms and utilising skills and weapons not only in combat but in exploration too. And this is made all the more exciting by the fact you are being constantly stalked by the Typhon, the alien life form that caused the downturn of the ship. At the start of the game, these encounters are electric as you start out pretty unprepared, so both fighting or stealthing past these guys feels exciting and fun, which is greatly emphasised with stellar sound design. Things start to become a little more predictable towards the middle and end of the game, but because you get access to a ton of great weapons, abilities and upgrades, things manage to remain fun right up until the end of the game. Also, I found myself constantly on edge the whole game as these mimic enemies can transform into everyday objects. So you'll be constantly looking around empty rooms like, Where are you? <laughs> Hello there. Such a good game, incredibly underrated. Definitely add it to your backlog list if you haven't already. All right, thanks so much for hanging out with me here today. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're planning on picking up any of these games or if there's any that you think deserve to be on a list like this. And, and I'm always looking for new recommendations, so please let me know if there's something that stands out to you. And if you're one of the people that got a Steam Deck over Christmas, what do you think about it? Um, it's getting so much love at the minute, it's so good to see. I'm still absolutely loving mine. Uh, it's put my PS5 to shame. Um, just about every game I played last year was on the Steam Deck. Um, but yeah, thanks again for joining today. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will catch you really soon. Thank you guys.